Hello and welcome back. I am Ms. Artastic and welcome to a first uh, vlog. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna try to start vlogging a little bit. So I'm gonna, this is a vlog for the week so you can kind of join me in the behind the scenes footage of what I'm doing this week. Um, so this week I am working on making resources and launching my brand new membership, which is gonna be called Art Project Academy. I uh, know it's not Art Project Membership, not Academy. Our project membership um, and it's going to be designed very specifically for our teachers and homeschool families, um, homeschool parents, anybody who needs uh, bundles of art resources. So what's going to happen is with your new membership, um, with our project membership, you uh, enroll. It's super affordable, the most affordable option for getting art resources. And then every single month, a new bundle um, of themed art lessons and resources are added to your membership library. So your art resource library will grow every single month. Um, and that means that you're gonna get uh, two art projects in your bundle, um, a hook, so a video hook for your lessons to do with a the theme, um, and then a when you're done activity and a directed drawing. So every single month you'll have some a new bundle of lessons and each month it'll be around a theme. So the first month will be rainforest, the second month will be elements of art lime, then the third month I think is, what is it going to be? <laughs> flowers, <laughs> flowers will be the third month. The fourth month will be uh, value, element, element of art value. And then I'll eventually do color. I'll have all the elements of art integrated into there, um, alternating with different themes to kind of just um, create sort of a, a membership that's going to provide themed art lessons, um, enough art lessons for say teachers or homeschool families to do. Um, throughout the month and then you can integrate them so into your other lessons if you want so they're all trying to incorporate themes either through art on um, the lens of art or other themes that you might encounter in education if you want to do some integrations um again so it's perfect for classroom teachers and for homeschool families so one of the art lessons will be for like a primary level grade your k123 and then the other um lesson will be like your grade three four five sort of six level. Um, so that way you have two options to use it. Um, if you're a classroom teacher, um, you can pick the grade that's for the, the art lesson for the grade that you teach. Um, or you can um, use the lower level one um, as maybe an adaptation or a modification for some students who need it, but it's still in the same theme as everybody else is working. Or for the, um, you can challenge students, right, with the uh, upper level one. Or for homeschool families, it works really good because now you have two different grade leveled art projects. And if you have multiple kids in your family, well, now you're done. Um, again, it also has a hook, so it'll kind of introduce the concept. So if it's rainforest, there'll be a hook, video hook for introducing about the rainforest. If it's about the element of art line, there'll be a video hook introducing the element of art line and value so far. Um, and so forth. So, um, and then of course, there's a when you're done activity all included. So every month will also come with that and a directed drawing video um, also within the theme. So that way you have lots of different options for learning how to draw and you don't have to worry about figuring out what kind of theme you're gonna work for. It's engaging. I'll do all the teaching because it's a video art lesson, but I'll also provide you with all your worksheets, your rubrics, assessment, your lesson plans. So that way if you need it as a teaching resource, it's ready to go. So it's a great option to get super affordable art lessons every month. You don't even have to think about what theme you're gonna teach or what you're gonna teach. I will just provide it for you and you can just sign in and check it out every single month. So we're gonna dive in today. Um, you can watch me create this week um, and prep for art project membership. Um, I'm also gonna be doing a webinar, I think this week. So that will be super exciting. I'm really excited for it. Yeah, webinar. Um, maybe teaching um, about teaching art to kids, giving you guys some ideas um, and strategies for that. So we're gonna dive in and we're going to make some art. All right, we're gonna get started. So um, first thing I do is I select the materials I'm gonna use and then I'm going to try and keep, so for every, um, 
month are going to be the same medium. So that way when you're planning, um, they're going, you're not going to have to plan a variety of different mediums or materials, but then the following months will have different mediums and materials. So that way they'll get exposure to different mediums and materials throughout the year, like hot pastels or wax crayons and watercolor paints. But um, in the single month, um, we're gonna do the same mediums and materials just so that way it makes it easier for planning and prepping and buying supplies because that is always one of the challenges. So we're gonna be going on doing a sloth for the first month, um, a sloth and a toucan artwork, and then I will do a poison dark frog directed drawing. Oh yeah, see so we have to go in depth. Gotta get our themes. Cause it's gonna make it a lot more engaging for students when we're doing art with a variety of themes. Now one thing that I won't be doing for, um, for our project membership is I won't be doing any art that is focused on um, holidays and um, holidays because uh, people will be joining at different times, so it'll all be kind of off-centered. But really, if you're looking for holidays and seasonal art, very specific, the best thing to do is check out the Miser Catsticks or our Teachers Pay Teachers because there's so much there. Um, it, it, so this is really more designed um, as being ex art lessons that are exclusive to art project membership. They're very exclusive to art project membership. Um, and it's designed with through themes, the elements of art, principles of design, artists, and art history. Um, so that way it's um, integrated maybe with other um, subjects. Um, something that it's designed for uh, everybody. Everyone can use. Um, is perfect for a classroom um, or homeschool program. That is the intention of it. And then um, again, because everybody's gonna be different joining probably at different times. Um, I wanna make sure it's uh, something that everybody can use no matter what time of year it is, no matter where you live or your culture, it's gonna be kind of more universal. And I think that's and super important um, for this program. It make, all the lessons, all the resources are going to be exclusive to this program. You're not gonna find them elsewhere on my other memberships, not on TPT, nothing. So they're all designed only for this. So if you're looking for the other stuff, then those are the places to go. So if you're but if you're looking for our project membership, tangible art projects um, that you can use, then that are exclusive to the um, program that are all to do in a, in, with the theme that's going to allow for deep learning. Then this is what you would love, want to get our project membership. All right, so I'm going to get going. So I'm going to transition myself into Ms. Archcastic mode. Sloth. I'm gonna sloth. I gotta change the orientation of my paper here. That looks good. All right, so we are going to be creating a lovely sloth for this artwork. I am so excited for this guy. We're gonna grab some thicker paper. This is just some cardstock, but you can use whatever thick white paper you have. And we're going to grab something to draw with, um, well, a certain, your own choice color to draw with. An oil pastel that is e that is a light color, so either orange or yellow, um, whatever is a light color to draw with. And we'll go over those lines a little later. But we want something just that's similar to like a brown um, in that warm color range, but that's not super dark because we're going to go trace over those lines at the very end. So here we go. First, we're going to draw our sloth's little face. So we're going to start off with just some zigzag lines in a circle on the left side of our paper to make sloth's face. And you can see my zigzag lines, they kind of go on an angle. And that's just going to be creating some fur texture in my sloth. How cute is it going to be? Because sloths are so fun. They're cute. They have super cute eyes. And I love their soft, silky fur. So we're gonna do a nice cute little sloth here. Then we're gonna draw a nice curvy line up, around the face. We're gonna draw one curvy line over 
in the head. So we're going to go down the head, over, around and down to make the back. So much fun with it. And they have quite long hair, so you can do some longer lines in there where you think the hair might be longer. And we're going to try and create some nice fur texture for the silky fur. On. So here is the sloth artwork that I created. And how cute is sloth? I love the little sloth. Oh, I think the camera's a little crooked. Let's fix that. All right, we're going to be creating our toucan design. start off by creating our toucan. So we're going to grab our orange pastel first and then we'll outline in black later. And I have some cardstock um, or just grab some thicker white paper. We're going to begin by drawing toucan's beak. So we're going to start off on the left side of our paper and we're going to draw a nice cur uh, curving line up and over. And we'll stop at around halfway up the page. Then we'll draw a curving line down and then curve it back. And then for the bottom of the beak, I draw one slightly straight line across. Next for the toucan's head and body, we're just gonna see a nice portrait of our toucan. So we're gonna have a nice curvy line up and over and then down the page and connect it to the bottom somewhere. Here is my toucan. So this will be the first project. How cute is that? And then, oh, where's my sloth? Here is the sloth for the younger students. So we got two rainforest artworks. And then we're gonna do our poison dark frog. All right, it's been a few days, I'll be honest. Um, so things I've done, I've created some more designs. I have Art Project Academy launching Monday, April 8th. Um, I added, so I've created since I last saw you. Ah, um, I created this Van Gogh, Van Gogh artworks for the Van Gogh bundle. Um, I've done an element of color bundle and then I did some value art lessons let me get this fixed sorry it got flattened because it was in a bin Ooh, look at this little monochromatic butterfly and then for the older kids a value apple and then to go with those their directed draws I'll have a Van Gogh <laughs> directed draw a rainbow and where did my other one go Anyway, it's somewhere. Oh, it's stuck. It's stuck to Van Gogh. There it is. Monochromatic turtle directed draw. And then right now I'm just working on some more months. This is how I work. I work in processes because then I'll start another thing and work on that for a month because I do all everything by myself. <laughs> anyway, so I just finished literally. It's a little bit wet. This uh, Keith Harry wax crayon watercolor painting dance party and for primary a barking dog in wax crayon and in watercolor paint. So again, for every bundle, I do the same mediums for both our projects. So that way it makes planning easier uh, and prepping, but I try to switch them up for every bundle. Then the next one, we're going to do oil pastel and watercolor paint. So this is for shape, element of her shape. This is for primaries. How cute is that? And then I'm about to film the next one for the intermediates, which is gonna be uh, a seahorse with both organic shapes 
and um whoa my camera organic shapes let's set this up better organic shapes <laughs> and not organic shapes what are they called geometric <laughs> shapes and then i'm gonna do a bundle on some the one after that will be owls and it will be a soft pastel bundle Again, they're all like fully planned. So you'll get a video art lesson, obviously, and then you'll get all the lesson plans, your templates, your rubrics, all of that. Creating a lovely seahorse artwork that explores both geometric shapes and organic shapes using both oil pastels and our watercolor paints. So here we go. We're going to take our, our black oil pastel. We're going to draw our seahorse first. So we're going to draw a nice curving line up and over for the head. We'll add a little ear with a curving line and a little snout with another curving line. I'm going to draw a line that curves up along the bottom for the jaw. And then we're going to add the body. So let's add one line that curves from that little ear down, up, and spiral in for that lovely seahorse tail. In the front, we'll add a little belly, and then we'll follow that tail and we'll follow that spiral into a point. <sighs> Next, let's add some fins. So we'll add a back fin with two diagonal lines out first, and then we'll wave it and connect to the other side. More cloud shapes or wavy shapes, whatever organic shapes you want. Spirals. Finally, for your last step, we're going to take our watercolor paints and paint in those remaining shapes. And how beautiful is this going to look? Love it! Yeah, and it's a lot cheaper than buying just one. Like, well, in our lesson in my kitchen picture store is six dollars so nine dollars a month is a sick deal for two art lessons after draws your intro videos and hooks and activities and everything it's a killer deal but don't worry you won't actually die ha, 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 ha. get it killer deal ha, ha, ha. all right we gotta do some owls i just got some construction paper okay got some ideas there we go. There my brain. That's how I work. I don't have an idea. Then I'll make one up. All right. I pick psh, picture in my head, and I'm just gonna make it. I'm just gonna make it. That's how I plan. I go. I write one word: owls. And then I stare at the paper, and I go boom. Because you have to do it. It's the pressure. We're going to start off with some construction paper and our soft pastels are a little bit different than oil pastels. So it's the first time we're using this together. They are like chalk. Now, if you don't like the feel of them, just wrap them into a little bit of piece of paper or a tissue 
if the if the texture is making you feel yucky because sometimes that happens okay we're starting off and grabbing a, any color piece of paper any color is good and we're just going to take the same color and we're going to take our soft pastel we're going to rub it around the background try not to get it on the cool right i like it kind of need some more backwards things i think all right next we're going to grab our brown and then we're going to color in around the edge of owl nice thick edge on it nice and thick around the edge And color in the whole wings. And then use a either a different brown or a green for the branch below. You don't have to color in the whole thing. If there's a little bit of yellow sticking out or whatever color you use for your background, that's okay because we're going to use our fingers to smudge it smooth in a little bit. Okay, back on owl we're going to address the inside so you're either going to grab a tan or a white a tan or a white choice and you're going to color that inside either tan or white you can also add a little bit to the top of the wings for a little highlight from that backwards moon and some in the ears Okay, now here we go. We got some smudging to do. We don't want to touch anything at this point because our hands are a little bit yucky. So now we're going to be very careful and we're going to smudge the pastel inside Owl's body. Be careful not to get it anywhere else. It's going to smudge the brown and the lighter color together. It's going to look so cute. Get that lovely blue outline. And then we can continue and use our same finger to smudge the brown on the branch. Okay, let's continue. When you're ready. Oh yeah, actually let's take our, let's, this dust it off into our garbage can. Get rid of some that extra dust. Shake it into a dust and dust a garbage can or a second bin, not blowing the dust around your table or on your friends or onto the floor. Okay, let's color in the beak and pick a nice cute color for your eyelids. Maybe I'll do pink eyelids. I don't know why, but I, I feel like I want to do some pink eyelids. Oh, I forgot my toes. I gotta do my orange toes or my orange tootsies. Oh, yes. And then we can smash those colors in. Just a light blend. Okay, let's grab our white. We're going to color in the whites of the eyes. Okay, and once you're done, we're going to uh, trace over our owl with our black. We're just going to go over our blue lines with our black and then we're not going to touch it anymore also get really messy. If you have anything in your background like fingerprints at the end you can just blend them out with your with a clean hand. Also add some nostrils to your beak. And then 
if you have any spots that you need to fix, you just take your same background color and color over it, and that will fix it. And just like that, your owl in reverse nighttime is done. All right, here's the owl. So cute, isn't it? Reverse nighttime. Love it. Where's my rake? I do have a studio rake. Where did oh, there it is. Well, I need to. I got some cool beats on my earbuds right now. Mr. Tastic shirts are for. That's why they're all black. Yeah, I just wipe it onto my clothes. Perfect. That's what happens when you can't find a rake. Okay. Another one. Last one, and then some directed draws. And then the long part editing all the videos, uploading all the videos, making all the lesson plans, making all the introductions. I still have to catch up from yesterday's stuff. don't know how. Come on. Oh. All right, we're going to be doing an owl in the night time. We're going to start off with our blue to draw, and then we'll finish our art with some other colors. All right, here we go. So we're gonna begin by drawing one circle for one eye, and then a smaller circle, just a little slightly higher, because we're gonna draw our owl in three quarter portrait or on an angle. In each eye, we're gonna draw one big circle and another smaller circle. Then we'll draw a curving line between the, or curving letter V between the eyes and connect the top. Now we'll have these cute little feathers around their beak, so we'll draw some curving lines just like that. Above each eye, we're gonna draw an upside down letter V with the one that's farther away being smaller to create the illusion of depth in a two dimensional space. And we'll connect the two ears and draw a wavy line down for the head. Gorgeous, isn't it? So soft and dreamy. I love soft pastels for that reason. Okay, we'll pick a orange for our toes and our beak. And I like to use yellow to highlight both the toes and the beak, just along the top. I'm also going to use yellow to color in our stars and moon in the background. a brown or a green to color in the branch at the bottom. You don't have to color the whole thing in. We're going to blend it so it'll fill in with your fingers. And you can blend with your fingers. Okay, next let's take our white and color in the whites of our eyes. Take our black 
And then now we're going to color in our pupils and then we're going to do our background. How cute is that owl? Okay, so now we're just gonna take our black. We're going to carefully color around our background. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna just blend it in with our fingers. I'm just very loosely coloring. Most of the most of it will be me moving it with my fingers around. loose medium around the back. Now we're going to take our fingers, we're sort of working gentle circles, and it's like we're going to draw with our fingers. And so I'm going to move the pastel around the background. Doesn't matter what color paper was, some of it will show through and mostly it'll turn black. A different finger so you see this finger is really black from the pastel so pick a new finger that doesn't have any black on it and we're going to blend out our stars and moon and then you can take a little bit more yellow and add it on top to really make it pop you can also add smaller dots now around your background just some tiny ones for those stars that are far far away we're also going to blend in the pupils Oh, I think I forgot to color in the feathers around the beak here. I'll pick a choice color for that. To finish up our owl, we're going to first dust it off. So, shaking the dust into a garbage can. And then we're going to finish it by tracing over our blue lines that made our owl with black. Because now it's our last step. And black is pretty smudgy, which is why we don't want to use it at the beginning. And to finish it off, we're going to use just an edge of our pastel to add some feather details onto our owl. And then we're not going to be blending anymore. So these are our final, final details, and we will leave them on the owl. Whenever you want some feathers, just add a few feathers here and there. Some wavy lines. How cute is that? And once you're done, your lovely soft pastel owl artwork is done. And here's the owl. So cute. Okay, that's the older version, obviously. It takes a little bit more <laughs> to do that. Okay, now I got to clean my hands. So my shirt. That works good. Perfect. And I'm going to do 
through some the middle of each of the glasses lens we'll draw an eye so we'll draw a circle and color it in leaving just a little white again some cute little eyebrows and a curving upside down line for his chin we'll draw two lines down for the neck and connect at the bottom We'll draw two lines out and in to make a t-shirt. Two lines down on a diagonal for the legs. A little line up the center. And we'll add little feet at the bottom. We'll draw two little arms coming out of the sleeves of the t-shirt. And we'll add his fingers at the end of his arms. Let's add stripes across his shirt. And just like that, your key pairing is done. Oh, shapes. I'm gonna do for shapes. a bug that has geometric shapes on its body. So, all right, so I did my poison dart frog. Check out how cute that is. Isn't it so cute? And then now I'm working on, so what I do is I batch. So I do all my, some art projects for a few months first, and then I gotta do all the lesson plans and the worksheets and the, those intro hooks and so that's so why I do while I'm sitting here I often go back and forth do one art lesson all the lesson plans and the intro and the the hook and then when you're done I'm gonna do all that you know back and forth while I'm here I have the mess I'm gonna do a bunch of filming first and then I'm gonna go edit all the videos and do the uploading and the website part and then I will do all the next steps after. Alright. So right now I'm just working on the element of art line. So we need the primer one. So we did a uh, felt marker painting um, for the background with different lines and then we're going to add our emojis on top and then we're going to do the next one which will be a uh, stegosaurus all right so once our background is dry we're going to add in our emojis so we're gonna have our glue. And we're gonna glue the border, then the inside, and then we're gonna add our emojis onto our artwork. than the inside. I'm going to place them wherever you want. Use two flat hands to press and hold. Then I'm going to put our glue lid back on our stick and we're going to press until we hear a click. And just like that, your emoji liner is done. So this is some emoji liner for primary level. And then now I'm gonna do a stegosaurus for a more intermediate level. All right, 
right, so we're going to do our Stegosaurus artwork, and we're going to do our background, and our, well, we're going to do our painting with uh, felt marker first. So we're going to start with our background first, and then we'll do our Stegosaurus after, and then we'll finish up by adding some texture with our wax crayon at the very end. So we're going to do our painting with felt marker at the very start. So we're going to grab our washable felt markers. And let's start off with drawing the ground. So we're going to grab a choice color background paper. I just have a nice yellow here. And we're going to draw a wavy line across. And then we're going to continue with wavy lines below. So we're going to follow that first line and we're going to make a nice wave across, exploring using line to create texture. filling in our background. And the line's gonna help us create this beautiful design and texture in this element of art line artwork where we're gonna create a stegosaurus. Okay, so we got a nice detailed ground for our stegosaurus to walk on. Next, let's draw some hills in the background. So I'm going to draw one coming off the page here. And I'll do that one in orange, and then maybe I'll have a second, and my second one, maybe I'll do like a red. It doesn't have to be true to what you think the color should be. We're just having some fun here. <clears throat> now we're going to do the same thing that we did with the ground, but we're going to use the colors that we picked. I'm going to follow those shapes, adding curving lines across. So I'm following that first line to fill in that space. Using line to make a beautiful, interesting texture in our background. Okay, that's my first one. Then I'll do the second. Okay, next let's do a palm tree. So I'll start off with green, and I'll add some palm leaves. Add some zigzags. And I'll just add some straight lines up the leaves for some texture. And I'll grab my brown again to do the trunk. adding zigzag lines every so often for some trunk texture. And then I'll add my little zigzags across for bark texture. Let's add my volcano shape up and over. And then I'm gonna follow that first line. Hopefully. Oh yes. Use our gray felt marker to add a cloud. We'll add our first curving line and then I'm going to follow that one. Great. 
Now before we do Stegosaurus, we're gonna paint this in. So we don't need any actual paint, we're just gonna use water only. We're gonna paint one section at a time by just moving our water over our washable felt markers. It will get lighter, it's going to wash the water. And let's grab a blue to start with. We're gonna begin with a nice big curving line for the back and a little curve outward for the tail. We'll add a curve or big letter C for the head. See, it's kind of like a letter C. And then we're gonna add our legs, one in the front, letter C in the back for the back of the leg, the thigh, and then another little leg at the back. We're gonna go over to the tail. We're gonna draw a line down from the tail and connect that back leg across and then up to the head. And then the belly. And now we can let it dry with our background. And once it's dry, we'll cut, assemble, and add our final details with our wax crayons. So finally, I'm going to do one more set of artworks. Oh yeah, forgot to show you. So this was the Stegosaurus. Did I show you this? I can't remember. I get really confused after a while I'm filming for that. And this will be the directed drawing for the line art unit and the emoji. And now we're gonna do the third month, which is gonna be a flower theme, but we're gonna be doing watercolor paints. So we're gonna do, uh, it's gonna be super cool. So we're gonna do two different watercolor paintings. The first one is gonna be watercolor painting. We're gonna do the background for primary skin in different colors and paint on silhouettes in black. And then we're gonna do the reverse for the um, older students. Um, we're gonna draw line art. Oh no, sorry, we're gonna draw paint in the flowers and the um, petals first, and then we're gonna do liner on top. And it's gonna look super cool. I'm really excited for that one. I'm excited for both. Okay, let's get started. All right, so we're gonna be doing a watercolor painting. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint our paper with water first, and we're gonna do some wet on wet painting. So it means we're gonna paint wet paint on wet paper. And in order to do wet on wet, we need to make the paper wet first. So we're gonna paint our paper first with water. And then we're going to paint on top with some colors. So you get to pick your choice colors. We're gonna swirl, swirl, swirl in the paint, and then we're gonna paint on the paper and you'll see it moves around super super smooth So edges, now I want to do insides. And we'll let the watercolor paint move around and do whatever it wants. Okay, so we'll leave those for now. And then we're going to do wet on dry for the stems. So we're going to do lines coming down from each one. 
Now we're just doing some simple painting details and then we're going to come back later with our fine tip markers and add details with that after. All right, so I got my details painted. I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to work on the silhouette of my primary version now while the other one dries. And this has made a huge mess, I'll be honest. we're going to paint in our flowers. So we're going to get our black paint and first we're going to paint some flowers and then we'll add our stems. So let's paint one, two, three, four, five dots for now. And those will be the centers of our flowers. Now when we paint, we're going to paint with just the tip of our brush instead of pressing firmly. We don't want to press firmly because then it'll make too big of a mark. If we use just the tip of our brush, we're going to make a really fine, small mark. So we're going to paint some flowers. So we're going to start off on one of them and we're going to make it some nice, big, looping lines. all kinds of things so that way other people can teach it now oh yeah I gotta show you so this is the intermediate and this is the primary version so similar different processes I'm exploring wet on wet and dry on wet and no well I'm dry it makes sense <laughs> and then um, some line art in there and it looks so cool. So you can have a nice consistent theme um, But maybe you need to modify or adapt for kids or you have younger students and older students Anyways, you have different options um, When you have one for an upper level and one for a lower level. Oh, yeah, directed draw. I need one more piece of paper I still have my garlic here. That's kind of random I really need to make sure I go outside at some point. I do need to go for a walk and make sure I get exercise. Otherwise, I literally will sit for 12 hours straight and I don't think that's very healthy. I need some blood clots or some random stuff that's happening to me. I should avoid that at all costs. <laughs> funny, not funny. For real, I do worry about that. I'm like, man, I should not sit there that long all at once. But then I have dark sense of humor sometimes and then I think I make a joke out of it. And then sometimes it comes back to haunt me. Yeah. Anywho, 
Let's do a nice flower. All right, we're gonna draw a flower. So here we go. Let's begin with the oval for the center of our flower. In that circle, we're gonna draw one circle on either side. And in that circle, we're gonna draw one big circle and two smaller circles to make some extra cute eyes for our flower. And then you can go ahead and color in the dark of the eyes, leaving those smaller circles. Okay. So now I'm going to do um, images for covers and stills and different details in the membership that I might need. And I'm also going to take images for like, high quality images for examples. So I got makeup on, so I don't look so like I've been working for 12 hours. <laughs> and now I gotta turn on my lighting because I need to, ugh, bright. I need to turn on this because I gotta film the intros of those videos separately. It's a lot of work and I haven't even edited yet. That's gonna be hours, hours. That's why I need 12 hours to do this stuff. All right, I just finished. Yeah. Okay, so now I need to get some food and I don't have time to eat normal food because hello, I have three hours left before I got to do after work things like clean my house. Um, it's three o'clock now, so I gotta keep going and get things done before it's six o'clock when I need to stop working. I've been going since 5 a.m. Yeah. So we gotta turn off everything in the studio. And now we're gonna go inside and do all my editing. So that's gonna take a while. So we're first we're gonna do the editing of the videos and then upload that because that takes quite a lot of while, especially uploading it all, right? Because it's not just, you know, our lessons, but also director draws, and that takes a long time to edit, then export, then also upload, all takes time. And then I'm going to do the lesson plans after that. And then, because it's Art Project uh, membership, um, not only is there lesson plans, but I also have to do um, our activities and task cards and an intro video, intro video for each one. I actually didn't finish the intro video or the task cards or the or activities for last week, so I also have to do that. I'm highly stressed. Okay, today's lunch is gonna be um, <laughs> ice cubes with some protein powder and by just a little bit, little bit of, um, and it's like Vega protein powder. Uh, with a little bit of ground chia seeds and frozen raspberries. Now I'm gonna add some water. Okay, so once that water's added, I just top it up with some um, unsweetened, no sugar, unsweetened almond milk because we don't need to add more sugar into our lives, people. 
I know you probably think this is disgusting, but stay la vie. I'm going to blend that. I like it and it has some ground uh, chia seeds in there as well for some protein and I'm ready to go edit. All right, so I've just finished editing um, and you can check these out if you're interested in these art lessons by heading on over to Art Project Membership by either, either Googling Art Project Membership or by searching um, artstasticcollective.com forward slash art project uh, or I'll just you can scan the QR code on the screen or hit the link in the description of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know in the comment section of the video what one of those were your favorite art projects. I would love to hear your feedback and I will see you in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, our project membership is now open by the time you're watching this. So I'll see you in there and I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you so much. Subscribe and like this video.